This is the Mint live on ZTN Prime. We are coming to you live from our ZTN studios in Zimbabwe's capital, Harare. I'm Iben Mabunda. Let's get started. Coming up on the Mint, artificial intelligence is gaining traction with chat GBT becoming a buzzword in recent months. Now, chat GBT, an artificial intelligence chatbot developed by OpenAI, has come with several benefits, among them the automation of repetitive tasks. Question is, are there any downsides? Well, such platforms are reportedly allowing students to generate novel text for written assignments, raising concerns, and these advanced AI technologies are ushering in a new age of plagiarism in as well as cheating. I will be joined by Ashan Baba, the EDUK CEO and co-founder on The Mint today. The Confederation of Zimbabwe Industries, the Zimbabwe National Chamber of Commerce, as well as the Agency for Promotion of Investment and Exports of Mozambique signed a memorandum of understanding recently in Zimbabwe's capital, Harare. Now, Mozambique's a uh, recent visiting trade delegation to Zimbabwe says its vast arable land presents an opportunity for skilled Zimbabweans with expertise in agriculture. The African continental free trade area set in motion in January of 2021 seeks to unlock a 3.5 trillion US dollar market from 54 member countries. What value can be unlocked by Zimbabwean companies and what can be done to tap into this market? As well, how can they leverage opportunities presented? That, of course, speaks to the companies. And, of course, the Ugandan manufacturers have described as a daunting nightmare the poor state of transport infrastructure connecting to the continental markets, listing as a leading bottleneck, blocking Uganda's ability to leverage the African continental free trade area market opportunities. This is according to Uganda's PML Daily. Time to take a breather. When we come back, we get into our conversation with our guest. The minute to be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You are watching The Mint. We are coming to you live from Zimbabwe's capital, Harare. Now, artificial intelligence is gaining traction with chat GPT becoming a buzzword in recent months. Now, chat GPT, an artificial intelligence chatbot developed by OpenAI, has come with several benefits, among them the automation of repetitive tasks, enhanced customer engagement through the use of AI-powered text-based artificial intelligence. Through the use of natural language processing algorithms, it recognizes and responds to rudimentary questions accurately. Are there any downsides? Well, such platforms are allowing students to generate novel text for written assignments, raising concerns. These, these advanced AI technologies could be ushering in a new age of plagiarism as well as cheating. I'm now joined by Aishan Baba, Educare CEO and co-founder on The Mint. Aishan, hello and welcome to The Mint. Yeah, thanks for inviting me, Ivan. Fantastic. Let's get the ball rolling. Uh, of course, the first world is already on with AI um, and, of course, with the chat GPT, which has become popular uh, since it came on board in November of 2022. Um, how can Zimbabwe leapfrog to such advanced uh, technologies? Twofold, yeah. We, we can uh, start at the very bottom, at the grassroots level, when we actually start teaching students future, uh, you know, uh, workers in the in, in the industries. So, um, and the other option really is trying to include it in the data that we have in Zimbabwe. So, country like uh, across industries from agriculture to healthcare, um, really transforming how we use that data with some of these new AI tools. So. Right, and, and of course, the world is now also advancing its technological skills with artificial intelligence taking the lead. How can AI assist um, in training pupils within the education sector? So what's crazy about all these tools, ChatGPT, BARD, are giving a human-like conversation to learning. And that's never been done before outside of the teacher relationship. So what you're giving students is the same productivity without the teacher, so to speak, but having it enhance their learning uh, you know, uh, process instead of actually harming it. So um, 
there's plenty of safeguards we need to consider, but overall, it can increase the productivity of what the student, uh, how the student learns. Yeah, because I mean, everything has been moving so fast. Mm -hmm. um, different forms of technologies that are coming. Um, you've got the metaverse and uh, the virtual reality world that has actually come onto the scenes, um, which could uh, produce some results in actually enhancing the education um, of students that we have, um, of course, across the world. But then, of course, the question would be, um, is artificial intelligence good or bad, um, especially where education is actually concerned? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I hear a lot of concerns from teachers, actually, when we talk about having a student just plug in their homework and get the assignments. You, you can imagine how how hard it is to tell whether a student has even gone into, has done the assignment or learned the material. So, like you said there, while this is a great tool and very productive, there are plenty of safeguards we, we can implement. So, um, yeah, we, we can. Let, Let's talk about some of those. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. talk about some of those. We just want to perhaps shed light in terms of how it is that this technology can be embraced mm -hmm. um, and uh, at the same time pro providing a solution, um, but uh, also some of the checks and balances that would need to be in place to ensure that there is delivery at the end of the day. Yeah, so starting on the student side, um, having the simple uh, homework help where we gave the example of, you know, I have an assignment that I need to complete. Um, what does ChatGPT or BARD say? And having all of that uh, written out for you is scary for the teachers. So what, what, what they can do is now like, use that as a template. And, and, and there's a lot of education about how students can use these tools in the proper way. Um, but, but on the teacher side, it's that like, can there be a relationship between the two about in making sure that you're not copying and pasting, but really building off those materials. So um, you know, the student has access to actually understand textbooks and learning materials better. Um, being able to not just go through a 500 page textbook, but actually inspect about specific questions I can ask a teacher, right? And go to those sentences in the books, ask it to rephrase or give examples that really get all the juice out of those textbooks and learning materials uh, alike. Fascinating and you know also there would be some pitfalls to take note of. Let's talk about um, this um, perception or this argument that says that most of the academic uh, programs that we have um, are more academic and lack uh, some degree of practicality. Could uh, you know the artificial intelligence revolution prove to be the gap that closes um, you know that particular uh, gulf that you find in that regard? Absolutely, and really, it starts with data, right? Like if employer, like in the real world, there's lots of data being happening across industries, right? Healthcare, agriculture, um, you know, having students get access to that with all this learning material with AI, you can see quite a tremendous results. We 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 hosted as a as educate a hackathon at Arendelle School where we gave them one and a half days to learn deep learning material with you know that usually require master level theses uh, to complete and and really like that that technology actually helps them leapfrog you know all these different uh, barriers that they once had so um, yeah the question then mm -hmm. would be where do we draw the line uh, mm -hmm. between the role that um, artificial intelligence could and should play uh, with its advent vis-a-vis -vis the, the role that the teachers and the schooling system would have to play. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, so that, that's twofold, right? You mentioned the teachers now because, so coming back to what, what we, the learning materials are really uh, give the students and the teachers is that they have a base curriculum to follow. So uh, with, with, with teachers, they can leverage the technology to build lesson plans, to, to generate assessments, and really customize the students' needs. So, um, you know, with these tools, right, like there's a lot of safeguards to protect the student and teacher alike, but again, we want to encourage the productivity of these tools. We don't want to like say, okay, ban ChatGPT, ban BARD from schools. That's, that's not what we want to do. We, we don't want to like say no to new, new technologies, but embrace it in, in ways that are safe. Uh, for, for both students and teachers. Ashan, tell us about um, you know your own platform, um, the Educare, and how AI uh, can actually be used to improve the education process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, with students it's a little bit more obvious uh, with uh, having some sort of 24-7 off like helpline of like, oh wow, I don't have access to my teacher in this class, but now I can ask the educator about 
my materials, about my assignments, about how to approach problems or think about it in different ways. Um, I can, like I mentioned about, really get the most out of learning materials, understand where I need help, understand where I can find information. Um, and with the teachers, it, it's really using that same base of those learning materials to customize those lesson plans, like I was just saying, build those assessments that are target, oh, this student needs trigonometry help in math. And a subset of these students really struggle with these kinds of problems that we can kind of du double down into when we do have class. Um, so teachers, again, right, like we also want to protect them uh, with like kind of the plagiarism tools as well to see that, okay, are students using this tool in a responsible way? And then can we actually measure that and see that um, on the teacher ed? So it, it's a multi, uh, it's a two-folded process where we're trying to bridge the gap and really be that central part of uh, educating. Um, yeah. And of course, on your website, you mentioned that a good 72% of teachers spend more than 15 hours per week on lesson planning. Mm -hmm. And two in three of the teachers say that they spend more than an hour per week generating custom assignment questions. Question is, how can AI eliminate uh, that so that teachers become more productive? Right, so it's having those tools built on top of those learning materials. So, so as we said, like, we want to demystify how hard be building a lesson plan is or generating assessments. So we want to actually like leverage the backbone of where the teachers get their initial information from um, off the learning materials, but then actually create some sort of clickable interface, right? A software that can allow them to build the plan, but then also customize it using some sort of conversational um, yeah. as well making reference to your own stats um, according to your data 62 percent of teachers say that detecting if a student used ai to plagiarize an assignment is a major challenge to their job how then can ai and your application assist in detecting you know some of these challenges right so we talked about the teachers having some sort of tool to detect this step one step two is that like it's about learning, letting the students know how to use these tools. So even if you detect, oh wow, this is 93% plagiarized from, from ChatGPT, how do you educate the student in, in actually using that tool better? Guide them through how we should learn about the process, how we should approach assignments. So, so it, the, the tool like itself helps teachers not only like detect this, but actually give guidance about how to approach students, how to kind of build that educational aspect into using these these new tools yeah. um, much to uh, deliberate much to decipher um, from this chat gpt especially in the context of education as well as of course in the broadest sense uh, possible with all of these innovations that are coming on board almost every day um, let's talk about zimbabwe for a little bit how can this economy how can zimbabwe position itself as a um, tech innovation hub it, it's just about encouraging um, you know, this kind of technology, starting with data, right? Because AI is, doesn't have the same impact without data. So really telling companies nowadays, how do I make data-driven decisions? How do I measure everything? And then really plugging in the grassroots to create a talent pool where this new generation will plug into and, and take, the, take that data and really find ways to forecast, eliminate resources that are, you know, unneeded but actually build on top of current technologies to to, to really push forward you know industries of all kinds so. lastly in 30 <laughs> seconds tell us how Zimbabwe can uh, position itself as a, a hub that actually in, invites and attracts for indirect investment especially where startup funding is concerned absolutely um, so it starts with like I said like these startups having relevancy in, in today's world right so having adapted to the AI era there's going to be a flurry of different companies, including Educate, um, that can try to position itself with these new technologies. So having that startup culture, not only in Zimbabwe, but throughout Africa, um, to support these new initiatives, because this is a global you know, revolution that, that's going to happen in the next year or so. And you know, being a part of these new toolings is really what's going to drive Zimbabwe. So Zimbabwe can really take front step uh, the, the uh, front steps forward with you know companies like us. Um. Ishan Baba, uh, Educare CEO, CEO and co-founder, thank you for joining us on The Mint. Yeah, thank you for having me. Time to take a breather. When we come back, we explore how the African continent of free trade area is impacting economies and how it is that Zimbabwean companies are looking to explore regional markets. The Mint will be right back. Don't 
go anywhere. that in depth and today our topic is DJ on the move is for all board G G G Baba Mrs. Life of ZTN Prime TV Evanu Rakupadaku Inonaka Evanu Welcome back. You're watching The Mint. We are coming to you live from Zimbabwe's capital, Harare. I'm Ibn Mabunda. Now, the African continent of free trade area set in motion in January of 2021 seeks to unlock a 3.5 trillion US dollar market from 54 member countries. Question is what value can be unlocked by Zimbabwean companies and what can be done to tap into this market? As well, how can Zimbabwean companies leverage the opportunities presented by this new trading block? Listed beverages producer Delta Limited, which has operations in Zimbabwe, South Africa, um, as well as Zambia, continues to innovate and produce new products for the regional market. Delta CEO Matt Valele says a new Chibuki innovation is sparking a positive response from the Zimbabwean, South African, as well as Zambian markets. In South Africa, we now have three production sites. We added a brewery in um, Butterworth. We have three breweries in Zambia and eight depots. We think in those new territories we'll be expanding more rapidly this year in terms of where we're going to operate from. So while you see those, you probably will find that next year we'll have had a little bit more distribution facilities and more ambitions to putting up plants in growth areas. We continue on the renovation and innovation drive in our brand spaces. We launched a brand in the Lager Beer space, Brand Seibu. Chibugu Super Banana and SCAD, while not a new innovation for SCAD in Zimbabwe, is new in South Africa and in Zambia. And Chibugu Super Banana is a very new innovation that has taken Zambia by storm. We have not supplied enough of it in Zimbabwe, so it's not been tested, but we are producing it for Zambia and indeed supplying it into South Africa. With this new line, we will then know whether Zimbabwe can absorb that and enjoy it as much as our foreign entities seem to be selling. We are this Mahel relaunch will probably be relaunched again uh, with some refinements soon now first capital bank is seeking to raise 90 million us dollars to finance exporting companies in zimbabwe and have so far generated 20 million dollars karen mcsherry spoke on this particular subject it's, it's import substitution it's lcs yeah and it's look it's a very very ambitious target but you know as you say we have um, cemented the line of credit from the eib and we're pretty much fully drawn down in that now we've just um, last week signed a deal with the african bank uh, which is the first of many i hope mm. which gives us 20 million 
Well, that's a wrap from the Mint. Do follow us on our social media handles at Zim Papers TV Network as well as at ZTN Prime. I'm Iben Mabunda, the money man. Let them do what they do. When we do what we do, we mean business.